Shut up and sit down. Hey folks, this is Tony Day. Today I am going to be going over a technique that you can use for your Zcam footage that uh, utilizes Cinematch that can help you get your footage looking pretty good uh, rather quickly. So here's the footage we're going to be working with. Uh, I have to give a shout out to Dark Echo Productions for providing us with this clip. This is from the movie Imaginary Friend, which is based on true events and produced by Dark Echo Productions and coming to a social media platform near you. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, look at this and try to figure out if there's an easy way for us to do this. Now, obviously, you can use a LUT, but uh, we're not going to do that. I like to use color management because I think it's the easiest um, and fastest way to get a, a, a good looking image um, with having as much control as possible uh, over the image. So let's go into the project settings. And uh, we're gonna go uh, into color managed and I'm gonna go into custom just to show you the input color spaces. What you're gonna notice if you have a Zcam uh, camera is that you're not gonna see any input color space for Zcam, which means that uh, we're going to have to either manually do this or find a, a workaround um, in order to make it color managed. So uh, I don't really know why Zcam doesn't have anything in here, uh, but I just know that it's not available and I'm not going to guess as to the color space or the gamma um, that's closest. So we're not going to use color management in this way. And you'll also notice that if you go into color space transform and we throw this in here, um, it's not going to be in here either. There's no Z, Z cam uh, color space and there's no Z log in here. Okay, so that's not really going to be an option. Okay, so in order to get around this in Resolve, there is a plugin that you can purchase called Cinematch. And with this plugin, you can actually use it kind of like a color space transform. And that's how we're going to use this. So we're going to label this Cinematch. And we're going to make a bunch of nodes. So we're going to choose the camera source uh, profile. And we are going to choose Zcam. You'll see that it's in here, which is great. And this one was with the E2S6, Zlog2. And we're not going to use limited. Um, depending on the footage you shoot, I don't know really uh, in different cameras which of these they're, they're choosing, but if you're familiar with your camera, you'll know. What I do know is uh, from looking at this is that because there's some dark areas like over here, if we don't choose full, we can end up with artifacting uh, in the shadows. So we're gonna go ahead and pick full here. We're gonna apply that. And then we're gonna choose a target profile. Now you can pick whatever you like. I'm just gonna choose Ari because out of all these that I've used from Cinematch, it's the most useful. Um, some of them are really not useful for me, like a lot of the Canon profiles just don't really, I, I can't grade them very well. Uh, it could be my skill, or I don't know what it is, but I just don't like it. So we're going to choose Ari, Alexa, Log C, and we're going to go to Full, hit Apply. And you'll see that that does this kind of transform, okay? Now, we are going to get a color space transform, throw it on the end of this node tree. For the input color space, we'll choose Ari Alexa, and we'll choose Ari Log C. The output color space is gonna be Rec 709, and since this is uh, gonna be for web, uh, for this video, we're gonna choose Gamma 2.2, and we'll leave the tone mapping on DaVinci. Uh, if you have it on none, it will look like this, and you'll have to manually correct it, or you can choose luminance mapping and map it yourself. I prefer this uh, DaVinci uh, roll off. I think it looks uh, uh, really nice and gets you a, a, in a nice uh, starting point. Now we have this essentially in a color managed setup. It's not the exact same as using a color space transform here. This is doing whatever it's doing under the hood, but it can at least get it uh, where in the color space transform at, at the end, you can change this to whatever uh, output you want. If it's a, uh, you know, one of these P3s, if it's Rec. 709, if you want to do a Rec. 2020 render, um, whatever it is you want to do, you can have that for your color space, and then you can also uh, change the gammas um, to whatever you like. If you're, you know, you have one that you want to do for web de delivery at 2.2, and another for, uh, you know, television broadcast for gamma 2.4, you can do that. So uh, this is, you know, that's part of the good thing about color managed. Usually, what I do at this point is adjust the exposure, but 
Um, there's not really much in the exposure that I would change. There's a couple things I'm going to do to direct our attention more to her face um, down the pipeline. But uh, usually in this note, I do exposure adjustments. But this looks this looks pretty good. Um, the face is right around where I'd expect it to be, uh, right there. Okay, so uh, that that's fine. And what we're going to do then is white balance this now. Generally speaking, I like to have a white card or a gray card or something to use, but you know, if you have skin tones in the shot, that can work too. And usually I'll, you know, in a, in a normal color managed workflow where I can use a project settings, I'll create a shape in skin like this, and I will use offset to pull it along the skin tone line here. The thing is that if we do it with this kind of workflow, um, we're not seeing the full output. We're only seeing what's going on here. So what I want to do is a, is a little workaround uh, that I think helps me get it a little bit more uh, accurate to what, to what I'm trying to achieve. And at the end of the pipe, after the transform, I'm gonna create a shape like this, okay? So we can see how far along that skin tone line and how saturated it is. We're gonna go here. We're gonna turn off the magic wand we're going to also get rid of that. And now we're going to pull the offset like this. And we'll just check with this here how far we are. See, we're right here. I'll, I'll use 2x zoom so it's more obvious. We can see where we are in the skin tone. So we're pushing a little bit toward red. So that's OK. Uh, we'll continue to pull down, go here, check. Um, and this way we're just, all, all we're doing here is isolating the skin tone so that we're focusing only on that and balancing based on that. And we'll just pull it toward green, pull back a little red. Okay, so we're right along that line now. So we'll turn off the magic wand, go here, and this is what we've ended up with. Now we can make a few adjustments. Um, we can always uh, make a push uh, to go a little bit warmer like this, if uh, we would like, okay? So we're just gonna leave it there like that. Yeah, and that will be our, our white balance for this. This is a highly compressed H.264 file that I was sent, so there's some blotchiness in here. In order to clean that up, I'm just gonna go ahead and do what to me is pretty normal. I'm gonna do a uh, denoise, spatial denoise at the head, and that cleans up that blotchiness pretty well right there. So we'll call that denoise. And then we'll call this balance, white balance there. Let's just check it out before, after, before, after. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, um, I actually like the way that this looks mostly. It's supposed to be horror though, so I'm gonna do a couple things. In this warp, I'm just gonna pull the saturation and reds back a bit like this. And I'm gonna pull the yellows back uh, as well. So this will just essentially calm down some of the uh, saturation in the face, and it's also a horror film, so uh, less saturation seems to make a bit more sense here. Uh, and then with this shot, because it's pretty neutral, I'm gonna focus on the lighting. Our attention is, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but our attention is gonna be drawn here to her arm because it's the brightest thing in the shot. If I were to look at the waveform, you can see right here, this is her arm, and then her face is around here. For me, this shot needs a, a little bit of adjusting. So I'm going to create a couple nodes here. So we're gonna arrange this a little. We'll put this here, this here, color space transform here. We'll just go ahead and delete that. And we're gonna use two nodes. This first one is gonna be a vignette around her face and this other one is going to be a uh, lighting adjustment around this portion of the frame. We'll call this darken. So we'll create a circle around her face like so. We'll soften it. We'll invert and then I'll go into here, pull this down. Okay, and we can already see that that's a, that's a pretty significant difference. So with this, what we're gonna do is draw a shape like this. We're gonna make it nice and big. Uh, yeah, like that. 
And this shot's static, so we're not going to have to do much. If you're doing independent uh, movies and you don't have a lot of uh, money, having static shots like this make a lot of sense because it's a lot easier to do adjustments in post. So, all right, so we're gonna just do like that. We're gonna turn on the magic wand. We're gonna soften like this. We'll do more on the inside like that. Okay, turn that off. And then we will Again, try to darken this area like that. So let's look at what we've done so far. This is before any adjustments. This is with the white balance adjustment um, and uh, uh, saturation, everything like that. And then here's with the uh, darkening uh, on the edges. So, you know, you can have your opinions on this. I would say that this looks a lot better than this. So now with that, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to just kind of arrange this a bit better. Uh, we'll do like this. We're gonna take this and this and this. We're gonna take all this and we're gonna create a compound node and call this, I don't know, lighting. And then uh, there's a couple more things that we are going to do to finish this out. Uh, I'm not gonna do a lot of tinting in this. Um, I'm not sure what uh, specific uh, kind of look the rest of the movie has, but to me this natural look looks already pretty good and for demonstration purposes, I think we're already there. So here what I'm going to do is what I generally do. Uh, we have a little sharpen here. This will counterbalance the denoise. The last finishing touch really that we're going to do for this tutorial is add some film grain. We'll throw this film grain over the top, go to 35 millimeter, and we're going to leave that the way it is. I'm going to make it uh, grittier than, than normal, uh, normal video. So we'll call that grain. Uh, we're going to take this, create a compound node, texture, and there you have it. That is it for this tutorial. Uh, this gives you, I think, a, a nice natural look. Uh, you can use this kind of process and then add whatever tinting you want uh, or whatever additional things you want to do with it. Uh, for me, the most important thing on any project is getting a good starting point and a correct uh, corrected starting point as as uh, uh, soon as possible and as quickly as possible so that you have more time to be creative. So I hope you like this video. If you did, please give a like and also subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. And again, if you would like to support this channel even further, uh, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Tony Day. Uh, and I'll see you next time.